Reality Ender 3 V2 versus the Reality CR6 SE. Which one will come out on top? Which one has better features? And which one do I like the best? We'll find out today. My name is Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So I get a lot of questions about which 3D printer I like the best between the Ender 3 V2 and the CR6 SE. Well, I tell you what, today we're going to go through the features of each one, and at the end of the video I'll tell you which one I like the best. They both have very similar features, and they're both really good printers. So if you were thinking about picking one up, you're not going to go wrong on either one. But I tell you what, I do have a favorite, and I'm going to tell you why. But first, let's go through each of the printers, let's look at all the different features on them, why they're the same, why they're different, and at the end of this video, hopefully you can decide which one you like the best as well. The Ender 3 V2 has a 220 by 220 by 250 millimeter build surface. The CR6 SE has a 235 by 235 by 250 build surface. So the CR6 SE has a slightly bigger build surface than the Ender 3 V2. So if we take a look at both uh, printers here, the frame styles are about the same. On the left you have your Ender 3 V2 and on the right we have a CR6 SE. Both these printers have the 32-bit silent board from Creality that are very silent in how they print. Both of them are great to use. Let's talk quick about extruders. This is an Ender 3 V2 extruder. Normally it comes with that black plastic Creality extruder, but if you remember right, I did a video and I replaced it with this TH3D metal extruder. If we go over here to the CR6 SE extruder, this is a brand new Creality extruder. Uh, you open it up, you push your filament through, and you close it. It's geared on the inside, and the CR6 SE has the filament runout sensor. The Ender 3 V2 does not have the filament runout sensor, and it's not a closed extruder that's geared on the inside. I turned both the printers so I can show you that they both have belt tensioning systems on the X and on the Y axis. Uh, I'm showing the X right now, and you can see that the Ender 3 V2 does have the belt tensioning here, but the CR6 SE is definitely bigger and a little more robust on that tensioning system. They both work about the same, they both do the job, and I tell you what, it's really nice to have this option on both printers, uh, or on any printer, because it really makes belt tensioning super easy. All right, so I got both hot ends in the shot here. This is the Ender 3 V2. This is the CR6 SE. Let's talk about them real quick. So the Ender 3 V2 has a brand new housing. It looks nice. Uh, the fans hide inside of here, which is really nice. And it uses the same Creality stock hot end that we've seen on many, many printers, including the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, the Ender 5, and more. Uh, it does have a Bowden system that comes down in and pushes down to the nozzle. And that's about it. Now it does have the holes here where you can add your bed leveling if you want to, but it does not come with any bed leveling from the factory. If we look over here, this is a CR6 SE hot end. This is a brand new design, brand new hot end from Creality, and they claim that it's customizable and modular. I have not played with anything else than the stock version of this, but they say that you can replace parts in here and kind of make it your own, customize it with uh, different parts. The CR6 SE also has built-in bed leveling, and it actually is built into the inside, and it's a little strain gauge in here. And this will actually come down, it'll touch the nozzle to the bed, and when that happens, it says, hey, this is where the level is. And it goes through and levels your bed like that. I have had very good luck with this new bed leveling system. It's nice to have bed leveling from the factory. And it's cool that they took some different technology to do that. With that being said, I think between the two hot ends, uh, so far, I'm liking the CR6 SE hot end just because it has some new parts and components. But if you're looking for something that's been tested with a bunch of printers, with hundreds of thousands of hours of printing, this hot end's been used so much and there's so many customizable options for it. One of the cool things about both of these printers is that they both have built-in drawers. Now a lot of us made these on our Ender 3 Originals, but in both of these models they come stock. On the left we have the Ender 3 V2. As you can see it's a basic tray, your tools kind of go in there and when you're done it just slides in the front, like that. On the right we have the CR6 SE. It comes with a foam insert, all your tools are pretty nicely pushed in here. Uh, they all have their own little homes, which is great. And there's magnets on the inside to hold it in. When you're done, you just take that and you slide it in like that. It magnets in place. So it's really cool that both these printers came with those print trays. So both these printers get brand new screens. On the left side, you'll see the Ender 3 V2 
The screen is nice and big. It does bring back the knob. It is not touch screen, uh, but it's nice and bright and it looks good. On the right, you'll see the CR6 SE screen uh, a little bit smaller than what you see on the Ender 3 V2, but it brings the new touch screen to the Creality printers. Uh, I really like the touch screen on this one. It works really well. Both of them are nice. Both of them have brand new UIs. They look nice, they're clear. And something to note, both of these screens need to have firmware updates along with the board. To do that, you have to take the screen off, open up the back and plug an SD card in. And that happens on both these screens. So either one you get, you'll have to do that. It's kind of a horse apiece. What matters is if you want the touch screen or you wanna go with the knob, but both of them are great to use. On the Ender 3 V2, you see the standard Creality spool holder. Uh, it works good, it's simple, it goes on easy, and there's not a lot more to say about that. You gotta love your coax filament. On the CR6 SE, they redid the spool holder and they put it on the side. That allows it to fold back and out of the way, which is really nice when you need a little bit more space. Then it folds out right to where it needs to be. This is a really nice design. I like this a lot. It supports itself down here. And I wish they did this on more printers. Actually, I think you can print this off of Thingiverse and make something very similar to this for your Ender 3 if you want. I turn both printers around to the back. And as you can see, both have great cable management. Both of the machines now hide the Meanwell power supplies that they both have in the back underneath, which is great. Both of them have the protected Y-axis motors here, which is awesome. And it just looks really clean and nice now. Something else to note, as you can see, the CR6 SE has a dual Z setup with dual motors. That means there's dual Z rods and dual motors to drive your X gantry up and down. The Ender 3 V2 in classic form does not have that. Historically, if it's tuned correctly and your X gantry is straight, you don't need it. But it's really nice that they do include it on the CR6 SE. The last thing I want to point out between these two printers is that the CR6 SE comes with a nice little carrying handle. You know what? I never thought I would use this until I started moving it around my shop here uh, to film and to move around. This thing makes moving the printer so much easier. I know you can print something like this off a of Thingiverse for any of the printers. I tell you what, it is so much nicer to have the handle on the top than to not have it that I now prefer the handles. I'm going to have to print these for my Ender 3s. That was the last feature I wanted to show off between the two. Now let's jump into my thoughts. So we just went through the features of both of these printers. And I tell you what, they're very, very similar with the exception of a couple things that the CR6 SE has that the Ender 3 V2 doesn't. But in the beginning of the video, I told you that I would tell you what my favorite was. And I'm here to say, my favorite 3D printer between the Ender 3 V2 and the CR6 SE is the Ender 3 V2. Uh, I really like the Ender 3 V2. There's so much you can modify on this thing, just like the original Ender 3s. In my opinion, it is really a, a true new version of the original Ender 3. It came out so much more nice and polished and it's everything you hope the next generation in 3D printer would be versus the original Ender 3. Now at the time of this filming, if you go on the Creality official website, this was $262 and the CR6 SE was $399. So that's over $100 more for the CR6 SE than the Ender 3 V2. That's a lot of upgrades or modifications or filament or anything that you could put into the Ender 3 V2 for that extra hundred and something dollars. And to me, that is totally worth it. Now I have an Ender 3 V2 playlist of the different upgrades and things I've done. I'll link it right here. And I tell you what, uh, I think you're gonna love the Ender 3 V2. That being said, the CR6 SE does print amazing out of the box uh, with the new firmware is even better. Along with the Ender 3 V2, you wanna make sure you upgrade the firmware on that one too, because the original firmware was a little buggy. But both of these printers will be awesome first printers from someone out there. Uh, and if you're worried about the auto bed leveling that this one has, it is really nice. It does work very good. I've had very good success with it. But you can throw a TH3D Easy ABL or a BL Touch on the Ender 3 V2 right here and you're gonna have your bed leveling. And then from there, there's not a lot different between these two printers. Now, like we talked about, the hot end on this one is supposed to be modular. I haven't played with any of those modular parts or anything like that. The Creality hot end on this one has been around for a long time. There's a ton of stuff that you can upgrade to it. And for the Ender 3 V2, there are a ton of hot end upgrades out there. All in all, 
I think you'd love both printers. It all depends on which one you want, which features you like the best, and how much money you want to spend. Well, I hope you learned something today, and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button right here, and the little bell to be notified anytime we go live on Monday night for hot makes, or anytime we put out a video like this. Let me know in the comments which one of these printers you like the best. Hey, have you guys seen this video?